Hey guys, Matthew Marmar, Invest.com. I'm bringing you today's two minute tip of the day. So today I want to talk about scars. Um, uh, I have lots of scars. I've had uh, lots of wrecks. I've had injuries. Um, and I want to talk to you about them. And you might say, well, what does having some scars have to do with <laughs> being successful? Well, let me tell you. Um, I have a big slit on my wrist and a big slit here on my hand. Uh, I have cuts all over my knuckles, scars all over my knuckles. These are all for different reasons, but uh, one of the things that my best friend and I did in college uh, was his, his uh, uncle was a builder. And as, they, as you build a home, uh, we would keep the job site clean. So nearly every day we were going to the job sites and we were cleaning up after the, the carpenters, the roofers, the bricklayers, whatever, right? So what we would do is he would drive the uh, front end loader, or the, the bulldozer, uh, around with the bucket and we would be bent over picking up nails and, and sharp pieces of wood and all the little leftovers, pieces of brick days were the worst. You had to wear gloves and if you forgot them, your hands got all cut up. Then when we would finish doing that, uh, we would scrape out the houses. And I don't know if you know what I mean when they say scrape out the houses, but whenever you lay drywall, here's some drywall, whenever you lay drywall, there's actually, you know, these are sheets of drywall, and in between each sheet, there is a, a space. And what they do is they put tape on there, and then they putty it, and then they sand it down until you get this smooth surface here so you don't see any of the joints. Well, when they put that joint compound on each joint, it leaves the gunk on the floor, right? So uh, what we would do is, is after that would harden and all the drywall was done, we would come by with these metal scrapers, which is literally a metal pole with a flat blade on the end. And of course, we did it for like two years before his uncle told us there was a 12-inch blade. <laughs> but we had a 6-inch blade. And we, we had a little competition between the two of us. And we would say, man, we want to get, because we got paid per job. So we would get $100 to clean out a house. Well, our goal was to get that place completely scraped out six inches at a time uh, in an hour. And so we would, you know, you're bent over the whole time and you're scraping, right? Well, that kills your back. Um, plus all the bending over work that we did cleaning up the job site. Then when the job site was done, what would we do? Well, we would lay the sod for the place. Now, if you don't have sod where you are, sod is just grass. Um, and depending on where you are and what kind of sod you buy, it either comes in rolls or it comes in little rectangles. We always use the rectangles. And so we would have an 18 wheeler load of sod show up. And this is a lot of work. It is very hard work, very labor intensive. Each, each square weighs, you know, 10 to 20 pounds. It's all several inches of dirt, depending on how deep they cut it. And, uh, so we would lay all this and then you had a hatchet and you'd get on your hands and knees and along all the edges of the concrete and to create the, uh, to create the border around the, the flower garden or the, the landscaping around the house, you had to use that hacksaw and, and cut it. And we, we would work from about 5.30 a.m. until about 1 o'clock and we wouldn't stop for lunch. We wanted to get it all done before we ate and that was some backbreaking work. Now, the, the original title of this little segment is called Scars, and the reason I tell you that is um, anybody, anybody that is successful has scars. Now, these don't have to just be physical scars. They can be emotional scars. You, you are going to, uh, if you choose and you say to yourself, I want to be successful and I want to achieve this goal. Um, I have a friend who's, who's a bodybuilder. And it takes extreme sacrifice for him to discipline himself to only eating certain foods. He has to plan out his meals weeks in advance, and he doesn't get treats, you know. Especially when he's preparing for a show, he has a very specific diet that he has to uh, be a part of, and that trims him down and everything. Well, he can't go out to eat with the friend with friends. He can't go to the bar after. Uh, after work and have a drink with the friends. He can't do any of that stuff, right? So he's sacrificing to achieve that goal. Not only the, the physical working out and, and the, you know, all the pain and the lactic acid that builds up in his muscles and all, it is a very painful process. Everybody has this, okay? So if you go talk to any successful person and you say, tell me what it took to get to where you are. Say you want to be successful? Well, 
you might spend less time with your family because you're so busy unless your family are, you know, my mother and, and family, she brought us with them. So as she was catering, we were catering too. You know, I was six years old running up and down the aisles of churches and we were decorating with bridal tool and chiffon and putting up candelabra and, you know, where all the other uh, six and eight year old kids were talking about their latest toys. I was talking about the wedding that we catered that weekend. So, <laughs> you know, so we're all, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell it from looking at me. I've had 10 throat surgeries. I had a wreck uh, while on the job with my lawn service. I've had knee surgery. I've had back rehab. I've had neck rehab. I've had arthritis. I've got tendonitis, every kind of itis you can have. I've just about had it. And I'm only 37. So uh, does that keep me from being successful? Well, it could if I chose to let it keep me from being successful. But guess what? I don't. Those are called excuses. Now, I tell you this, and I tell people this a lot of time, and they don't like it. When we start talking about what keeps you from being successful, most of the time, it's you that keeps you from being successful. And it's up here. This is you are your greatest battle. I've mentioned this before. So the problem is going to be overcoming yourself. Okay? So there's lots of ways to do this. You might need to go to counseling. You might need to change your diet. You might need to change your group of friends. You might need to get your spiritual life right with the Lord. There's a lot of ways that you might need to clean up your life. And those are all good, good things. But this life is a hard life. And if you're wanting to be successful, you are going to have to work and sacrifice and take the scars and the hits and the bruises. And instead of using them as excuses, instead of using hardships as reasons why you're not successful, use the, that crap that the world throws at you. Use it as fertilizer to grow where you are planted. There are some of the most successful people in the world in the most terrible of circumstances and that grew out of and blossomed a great desire to do great things that they were going to uh, achieve no matter what. And not everybody gets to do it, but I guarantee you will be better off. You'll have peace in your heart if you will give it your 110% always. I hope this message blesses you. You guys have a great day.